Tell me, what role has faith played in your life? It's really been the essence of my life. I became a believer at the age of 10. Mm -hmm. um, and since that time, it's been a growing experience of understanding what God wanted out of me and what that meant. I think when I was 10 years old, I was in a church that basically said, get saved, go to church, go to heaven. That was about it. Mm -hmm. And when I was 15, I realized that the faith of a believer was not about just getting saved, going to church, going to heaven, holding on for dear life until the afterlife. It was about this life. It was about walking with Christ in this life to be light and to be salt. And that was life changing for me. It seems that the story of the Bible is so much a story of this land. There's people and characters in it but the land somehow comes to life, and it's very different being here uh, and, and walking it. Absolutely, this is uh, where our roots are. So when we came, I mean, we saw an opportunity and we really felt God was drawing us into this to become a part of this nation and become and participate mm -hmm. in reestablishing a messianic witness. Yeah. When you go to Jerusalem, it's just layer upon layer yeah. <laughs> you know, of secrets. And the archaeologists, of course, are digging down historically, but biblically things are being revealed. And I think really it's a sign that we've entered the final chapter, really the end times. And God is preparing ourselves and Christians everywhere for the last part of this uh, great, great story. And this is what's, I guess, really remarkable. It is a, a find from the time of Jesus in the place where Jesus lived and, yeah. and spent much of his time. Yeah. And so many of the stories and the history of Jesus comes right from this area. Yeah. And there it is all in place, sitting there in the ground, just being uncovered. So <laughs> how has it impacted your faith, if at all? Wow. I think in Mary Magdalene, I saw a woman that within the short span of her engagement with Jesus, grew to a point of maturity that I would like to be. She was set free from seven demons. And when we engage her at the point where Jesus entrusts the good news to her to go tell his brothers, we see that she has walked to a place of faithfulness where she didn't run away. And how did she come to a place of such rapid growth? Mm -hmm. And for me, it's become an inspiration that in the shortest possible time, she has loved Jesus so much and she has probably walked in a road of obedience and just what Jesus carried in terms of his love for the Father and who he was as a man and I think about what he has accomplished and what his heart is so I think I've come to know him a, a little bit more and the desire is growing as I have the privilege to be in this place. The passion and the intellectual passion is all there. And then there's this, now you characterize it as an indispensable Christian heart. Right. Can you just give me your sentiments around that, you know, sure. even in a personal way? Yeah, it would be fair to say that the entire enterprise is about that. When Jesus came, and this is a fairly famous line at the Last Supper, he breaks the bread, he gives the wine, he says, this is the blood of a new covenant. Mm. The core provision of the new covenant, which is the point of it all, it's the apex, it's what the whole story has been building towards, what God is giving us and made possible through Jesus, is a brand new heart restored from this broken, sullied, corrupted, twisted heart that was a result of the fall and we've inherited. Now we get a new heart. That's why Jesus said you must be born again. That's what he's talking about. And there's something new that's going to happen. Well, this is the new life. This is the whole point, this restored relationship with the Father. That's what it's all about. That communion and union with God in that friendship that he intended with us for, from the beginning. Mm -hmm.